I want to first welcome you and thank you for coming to the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Centers. This is their 16th annual fall community lecture. And this year the theme is the science behind Alzheimer's disease prevention and brain health. And tonight we're going to learn about risk factors for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias and the prevention strategies that we all can take to help protect ourselves from this disease. I'm Carol Kobe, and so pleased to once again have the privilege of emceeing this fall lecture, or as I like to see, say, uh, welcome to another example of the Wisconsin idea, the dynamic relationship between the amazing things happening at the University of Wisconsin that reach out all to all the citizens of our state. For the past 25 years, my role has been as a communications bridge between experts in such areas as Alzheimer's and the public. First for 10 years as moderator of UW Hospital and Clinic's Picture of Health, their cable television series. And for the past 15 years, I have been producer and host of All About Living. And that's a Madison-based radio program directed toward an aging demographic. And of course, we have many discussions on Alzheimer's and other health issues. But my relationship with Alzheimer's disease is deeper than a professional one. It is personal. In the 1990s, my husband was diagnosed with frontal lobe dementia. And I learned firsthand how Alzheimer's and other dementias strip people of who they are and how they strain the health and emotions of their family members as well. My husband passed away in 2001, and since then I've done what I could to just, as one person, be at the Alzheimer's table and hopefully make a little bit of a difference. I am a board member of the Alzheimer's and Dementia Alliance of Wisconsin, and I'm one of the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center's 2,300 research participants. I go once a year and am royally treated as they check my cognitive abilities and my other vital signs. And I've even had that infamous lumbar puncture and the MRI, and they're nothing to fear, believe me. And now I am privileged to serve on the new advisory board of UW's Initiative to End Alzheimer's. And this is one of two major initiatives recently named by the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. The other is cancer. So stay tuned. You'll be hearing more over the next months and years about the recognized leadership role UW is playing in taking research in Alzheimer's disease from the laboratory to the patients and to the communities here in Wisconsin and beyond. But now, let's get back to our program at hand, the reason we're all here tonight. And I'd first like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. This evening would not be possible without their generous help and support. Special thanks go to the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health and the staff of the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, the Madison VA Hospital, and the Geriatric Research, Education, and Clinical Center, the Wisconsin Geriatric Education Center, Bright Star Care, Senior Helpers, Azura Memory Care, Lighthouse of Sun Prairie, Midwest Home Care, Oak Park Place, Oakwood Lutheran, and Heritage Senior Living. I hope you had a time, and I know you did because I saw so many of you out in the other room uh, looking at all of the exhibits and talking to the exhibitors. Uh, we'd like to thank them for participating this evening, and we thank them for contributing generously to the health of our community through the important work they do. They are our resource, so please use them, and I heard, hope you learned a lot about the various services that they provide. Then you should each have received a beautiful red, red welcome bag and the materials in it this evening. And I like the bag just for itself. This is one of those kinds you can fold up, pull the string and put it in your purse and it takes just a little bit of space. So I'm uh, getting very high tech. But I'd like to make you aware of a couple of items in it. Inside the bag you will find an evaluation form on blue paper. And I think you could just unclick that um, 
the holder and you'll find all of these forms. And we will collect that at the end of the program and we please encourage you and appreciate your filling this out. It helps us ensure that we are bringing informative and relevant programs to you each year for this community lecture. So it is important that you tell us what you want to hear. And then if you're interested in participating in research, uh, you will find a brochure in your bag called Join the Search for a Solution. So fill out that form inside the brochure and send it into the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, or you can leave it with one of the many representatives here tonight when you turn in your evaluation form. What happens next is that a research specialist will contact you about your interest in becoming a research volunteer. And there are so many places that you can play a role. So it, you get to pick and choose which, which is the best fit for you and for them. And I heartily encourage you to at least explore this option. It is the research participants that are helping us find workable treatments and eventually a cure for Alzheimer's and other dementias. For those of you who would like CEU credits for attending tonight, fill out the yellow CEU registration form, which you should have picked up at the registration table. However, I don't believe all of you did receive one, so we have people in the back of the room, and if you'll just raise your hand, if you would like a CEU credit, and they will pass out the form to you. So if there are several hands being raised, keep your hand up, and. Uh, you will receive one of those. They're coming right down the aisle now. Then finally, we'll have time for questions at the end of all the presentations. So you have a note card in your red bag. And please write down your questions on the blank note card. And then staff members will collect these during the question and answer portion of the agenda for the researchers and doctors to answer at the end of the presentations. And then finally, just a housekeeping matter before we begin, and I just did it myself right before I came up, this would be a good time to turn off your cell phone if you haven't already done so. With that, I think we've covered all of the housekeeping details. Just out of curiosity, how many of you are attending this function for the first time? Wow, that is terrific. And I hope that there's a place that you can tell them how you found out about, about, about this event, uh, because it is such a wonderful opportunity. How many have been to the fall lecture before? That's an impressive group also. Well, welcome to all of you, those who are first timers and those who are returning. I'm sure with tonight's program, you will be equally impressed as you have been in former years. And now on to our first speaker. And our first speaker tonight is Dr. Sanjay Astana. Dr. Astana is the director of the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. And he is truly the vision and the persistence behind it. He is chief of the Division of Geriatrics and Gerontology at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health and was appointed the first associate dean for gerontology in 2015. He also holds an appointment at William S. Middleton Memorial Veterans Hospital, where he serves as the director of geriatric research. His father, an economist and diplomat for the United Nations, suffered from Alzheimer's disease. And that spurred Dr. Asthana's study of the disease. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sanjay Asthana. Thank you, Carol. Thank you very much. How are you all doing? Good evening. Thanks for being here. Such a beautiful evening. And I really thank you all for being here because we really want to plan, we plan to uh, share some very exciting things that are going on in the field of uh, dementia research and certainly here at UW-Madison, uh, Wisconsin ADRC and the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Institute. So uh, as you know, this is the science behind Alzheimer's disease prevention and brain health. Um, and this is an annual event that Carol shared with you. We uh, share a new thing that are coming in the field of dementia research with you all, uh, with, with caregivers, with family members, 
with healthcare professionals, and our collective aim is so that we all stay well-versed with the latest about this disease so that it can help us all to fight the disease, to prevent the disease, and hopefully one, find one day a cure for the disease. So let me uh, go to the first slide here. I just want to share with you uh, some of the data to make a case. This slide has been up for a little while, and as you all know, in the United States, we currently have about 5.3 million Americans with the disease. And unfortunately, if we don't find any effective treatments or ways to prevent the disease, then by 2050, this number will triple to over 15 million Americans with this disease. Worldwide, we have, we have about 30 million people in the world with this disease. And in the next 10 to 15 years, that number will increase substantially. As a country, we spend about $230 billion each year to care for patients with this disease. Um, and once again, if the treatment is not found, within the next 15 to 20 years, this disease alone could cripple Medicare. It will cost $1 trillion, trillion dollars, to care for patients with the disease. So you can imagine just the economic impact of this disease is substantial. And of course, we all know the emotional and the societal and many other implications of the disease. So we are very fortunate to have one of the National Institutes of Health funded Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Centers in the country. There are about 30 plus centers in the country. And at our center, we have 25 principal investigators that are spread all over the UW campus, they come with all kinds of expertise from all kinds of colleges and centers and institutes across this fifth largest university in the United States. And we have over 100 plus people who work with the ADRC, and we right now support about 50 active studies in various aspects of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, many of them are uh, involving human beings, and there are many that involve animal research. Uh, we have over 860 volunteers who are doing research with us right now, and we hope that number to go up to about 1,000 people who will be doing active research with us uh, in the ADRC. And our major research focus is to find new ways to diagnose disease when people have no symptoms, because you'll hear, uh, in fact, uh, Alzheimer's starts about 20, 25 years before you see the very first symptom of the disease. So about 20 plus years, the disease has been going on in the brain of the person with the disease, but they have no symptoms. So during that pre-symptomatic stage, if we can find some ways to diagnose the disease or pick up that the disease is ongoing, we can find treatment that can stop the disease while the patient has no symptoms. How about that? Couldn't be anything better, right? And we are heading that way. We are doing it here, and we're doing it across many, many such centers uh, in the United States, including at the Rush University, where we have our keynote speaker for you today. Uh, we also are trying to find new treatments and hopefully one day a cure for the disease. So uh, we have all kinds of research going on right here in Wisconsin at the ADRC, and Dr. Puglieli, um, I, I believe that he, uh, he, he's obviously a genius, and I think he might be a, a huge award winner one day, but Dr. Puglieli is just one of the many scientists who's doing some molecular and animal research, and he has identified a, a new compound that we hope from animal research, from more than 10 to 15 years of research, he's now found this new compound that we are hopeful uh, will one day uh, will be an effective treatment, hopefully perhaps a prevention for the disease. So more research is going on, and he is truly an innovative scientist. We have got research going under Dr. Sterling Johnson's leadership, all kinds of brain scans, pet brain scans. Uh, Dr. Cynthia Carlson is doing research, uh, doing examination of spinal fluid that we collect from lumbar puncture. Uh, she's done over 1,200 such lumbar punctures so far, and we have tens of thousands of aliquots of those spinal fluid that we send all over the world in the United States and internationally to do all kinds of research. So we have that CSF research going on here. And we also have a number of intervention studies. Exercise is one of the 
perhaps the most effective way right now that we know that can uh, to some degree control the disease. And I'm hoping one day some dietary interventions are going to come through. You're going to hear all about dietary intervention from a world-class scientist. Dr. Morris will be speaking with you just in a few moments. Um, and Carol shared with you uh, the, uh, the new program that the Dean and the Chancellor of UW uh, Wisconsin, Chancellor Blank, has announced called the uh, UW Initiative to End Alzheimer's Disease. Just to share with you, with, for every dollar that we get from the US government, from the National Institutes of Health and the VA, we locally have to generate another 42 cents through philanthropy, through fundraising, through any such event we can think of to give us the total amount of money we need to complete a study. In other words, we only get about 60, 70% of the dollars we need from NIH to do a study. The rest is upon us, about 30, 40% of additional funding to complete that study. And that is where the role of initiative comes in. The primary role of the initiative is uh, to raise funds to do philanthropy and to find more support, more dollars to, to do innovative research here. So that the mission, it involved the ADRC and also the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Institute and both the programs have staff and booths right outside. Please go and meet them. Both these institutes and programs are doing amazing research and community research and services. Please meet them and learn more about them. <laughs> 